Alright, hey everyone. So in this video, uh, we're going to continue where we left off, having just created our skin uh, for our Scene2D UI widgets. Um, oops, that should be expanded out. There we go. Uh, we're going to start working on our main menu screen. And I know things have been a little bit boring, but now we're starting to get into the interactive part of our game. Um, now that we kind of know a little bit more about Scene2D and how to use some of the more special uh, properties of it, uh, we'll be able to start gearing towards workable objects and things to mess around with. And so um, we're just going to get a basic main menu screen set up with uh, some buttons that we can click and go into other states and whatnot. And uh, from there, we'll start building our game, which will be a little bit more uh, generic Java code rather than uh, much libgdx intensive stuff. And that's where things kind of get a little generic. But um, other than that, uh, we can start looking at utilizing uh, text buttons, and that is a Scene2D uh, UI widget that is pretty much just what it's called, a, a button that has some uh, string of text on it, and you can click them and uh, make them do stuff when you click them and whatnot, and so that's kind of what we're going to be gearing towards to in this video. Um, so. Let's uh, kind of get started here by adding some of the things we're missing in our main menu screen. And uh, one of them is going to be, of course, setting that input processor. So uh, that's going to be set to our stage and our show method. And also, I forgot to mention, I, I accidentally put this in the main constructor uh, in the previous video. And we're going to want to just put that down here in the show. Um, and the reason I do that is uh, I kind of forgot that we're loading all the screens right off the bat. So um, because the assets aren't initialized yet, uh, that would cause a crash. So just be wary of that, or aware of that. And uh, also, I removed uh, all the other unnecessary stuff. You know what, I'm going to get rid of that one too. Um, all the unnecessary widgets we're not going to be using anytime soon. And um, I kind of chopped it down to just be label, text buttons, and progress bar. So just keep it this basic, and uh, I, I believe I had an error when I ran it because I was uh, one thing that I removed last time. Um, it was trying to use it for that scroll pane or whatever. And uh, so now that that's gone and all those are reconfigured, everything will just be what we're using only so we don't have any extra stuff to deal with. Um, so to continue on, we move the skin uh, loading code down here. And then we also want to do stage.act, as we've seen in the previous uh, states. And then we also want to do stage.draw. And I believe that's all we have to do at this point. So um, just to make the method ahead of time, we're going to do init buttons. Okay, And we're going to use this method uh, to be able to load up all our buttons for our main menu screen, uh, just to keep the code kind of neat and tidy. So that's going to be private void init buttons. Okay, and uh, we'll leave that like that for now. Um, so we want to be able to get into this main menu screen after we've transitioned from the splash screen state. And uh, to do that, I'm going to introduce a new scene 2 uh, actor action that you guys haven't seen just yet. And that is called the run. And we're just going to set that to null for now. Um, but what the run does is it'll call an arbitrary uh, runnable object and execute the code that that runnable object contains. And that can be really nice to load things in sequence, like after a certain action has happened with an actor and uh, you want it to run some specific code after certain things have occurred. And it'll trigger and call that code in the runnable and you can do a lot with it. It's, it's very flexible. So um, with that, uh, we're going to create the new runnable. And that's, we're just going to call it transition uh, runnable with two ends <laughs> uh, equals new runnable. And uh, when, you, when you're creating a runnable, it's actually a different kind of object because um, you want, it, it forces you to implement the abstract uh, run method. And um, you have to uh, just put in the code that you want. And then down here, you'll be able to plug in this transition runnable. So um, 
transition runnable. Okay, so now once uh, that splash image has completed, uh, because it's in sequence, I believe that is, yeah. So once it goes through all these actions here and finishes fading out after 1.25 seconds, it'll call this transition runnable and all the code inside here will run. And uh, what we're gonna do there is just set the screen to the app dot main menu screen and it's uh, as easy as that. So once we get down and fade out, it'll go through here, set the screen to the main menu screen and then we should arrive in our main menu screen and the main menu screen should be uh, blank because we don't have anything in there yet. Um, which is what we're going to be getting to when we uh, initialize our buttons. So uh, just to run it real quick to make sure everything's running according to plan so far, uh, we should see it load. It should go through the splash screen. You'll notice the uh, triggers are going through here. And then now we're in the main menu screen. So perfect. That's exactly what we're looking for. And uh, now we can move on uh, down to our init buttons. So. I'm going to create a few buttons here at the top. I'm going to kind of keep them close to my stage and uh, I'm going to call them, uh, I'm going to append button to the beginning of each of their names just so we'll be able to keep the naming conventions nice. And the object is a text button and as you can see that's the package uh, that they can be found in. Just import the class there and I'm going to call this one button play button exit. So we're just going to start off with these two buttons and uh, we'll go down to our init buttons method and uh, that's going to be button play equals new text button and they do have some arguments that they take um, and that's going to be the initial text that they can start with so we're just going to call that play and then it's going to be the skin and it's going to just use the default skin. So just so you can read what's going on here, we're passing it the theming attributes that we created um, using what can be found in the UI skin.json file. And you'll notice that there's this default tag on every single one of these um, widgets, or they have like different names and stuff. Uh, for our text button, we have a theme called default and so that's what this is. I'm telling it which theme to use. So on your UI JSON, you can have multiple uh, theme tags and you can call them all sorts of different things. So you don't have to keep loading new skins and everything. And uh, that can be pretty nice to switch them in and out and have different uh, flavor buttons going on without having to change skins and having multiple skins and whatnot. So it's just really nice, ease of access kind of stuff. Um, so now we want to uh, set the position and um, I believe I wrote this one down so it should be 110 by 260 that should be somewhere in the center top or around the center top of our screen um, and then we also want to set the size of this button which is another thing I uh, wrote down ahead of time just to make sure and so you guys don't have to watch me fiddle around with this for a while to get things nice and correct. Um, and then after you've done all these little initial things, uh, because we don't have any actions that we want to tack onto these just yet, uh, you can just do stage dot add actor button play. Okay, perfect. So uh, just to start, pretty easy setup. Um, you just initialize it as I described, passing it the skin and which theme it, that's contained in the skin you want it to use, the default text, and you can set this text outside of that. Um, button play uh, set text, of course, easy, easily assumed. Um, you can set the position anytime, size anytime and whatnot. So, uh, and then once you've got your button all configured, you have to add it to the stage. So the stage will contain all the actors. And if you don't add it, it won't be visible and it won't be able to update or render or anything um, because the stage controls all that. So uh, just to run it one more time, let's see what we get.
Okay, and that's perfect. That's awesome. We have a clickable button now, and you see, like when I click it, click it, it uh, flashes red. And if we go back to the UI JSON, you'll notice I have the uh, so text button. Uh, default is the theme I chose, and uh, the down. Uh, let's see. I know it's in here somewhere. Um, toggle. I think the toggle is the important part when it comes to buttons. Um, font, default font, font color. Yeah. Um, I wonder... Oh, you know what? It's actually just default round down. And in our UI skin, the default round down is just this red patch right here. And so that's what I'll be using as its uh, default pressed uh, kind of theme. Um, so now that we have that, we got our first clickable button, and it's using the text that we uh, have set up for our game, too. So it's good to see that our text is working, our, or our uh, font is loading into these buttons as well. It's uh, pretty nice. So you might be saying, well, cool, we got some buttons that change red. That's all nice and wonderful. Um, can they do anything? Uh, yeah, well, you, you have to set it up yourself, but um, it's easy enough. So. Now that we got a play button, this will be used to transition into our game screen, which we'll be creating later down the road. Um, but let's get into creating our exit button, and uh, we'll add some functionality there to be able to exit our game when pressing that. So text button exit skin default again, okay, and then button exit set. Is, no, set position, okay, and uh, 110, and that's going to be 190, I believe they have a 70 pixel offset, button exit, uh, set size, 280 by 60, same size and everything, and then uh, down here, again, add actor, button exit, okay, and uh, button dot set, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's actually add exit dot add listener. So uh, with this method for text buttons, um, you can add a click listener. And uh, I mean, there are a lot of ways you can do this, but this is just the way I like to do it most of the time. Uh, new click listener, and that actually should have auto completed for us. I don't know why that didn't there. New click listener. Hmm, that's kind of annoying. Um, that should be auto filling for us. Maybe I have to do it in like one quick sweep again. Dot add listener new click. Yeah, that's just not doing that. Click. Okay. Uh, so, hmm, this is a little embarrassing. I'm going to pull up my cheat sheet real quick. Um, okay, new click listener, void click. Yeah, I don't know why that is isn't auto-completing. Um, strange. Normally it, uh, it does that same thing like we saw with the runnable. Um, but yeah, I'll just, I don't, <laughs> I'm kind of lazy. I don't like writing all that out by hand just because of the way it formats. So I'm just going to copy and paste that, remove that, and, uh, Get that imported. So um, this is what it'd look like. New click listener. Um, it basically takes the click listener and changes. It has a click clicked method in it, and you can uh, track the input event. And the event holds uh, the button object that was clicked, and or rather the actor object which was clicked. So you can actually interact with whatever was clicked there which is pretty nice, the X and Y of where the event happened. So um, now that we have that uh, all set up, uh, the listener will listen for click events that happen on the button exit object. So we're going to set this to be um, gdx.app.exit. Easy enough, nothing too fancy there. And uh, if we run it one more time and try actually clicking on this, load, it'll go through that splash screen, and I'll show you guys how to actually 
Um, so we don't have to keep going through the splash screen and whatnot and jump right into our game. Uh, I'll show you guys how to do that real quick. Okay, so we have a play button, and now uh, when we hit our exit button, the game should close. So I can move my mouse off and nothing will happen uh, because I'm holding down the click and dragging off. But if I click and let go, there we go. Our game exited successfully. Everything is all good to go. And uh, everything should have been disposed and whatnot um, as expected. So with that, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this button tutorial. So now we got some simple buttons and they're slightly interactive. Um, and I believe soon it'll be time to start working on the actual game content. Um, oh, right. Uh, first thing I'd like to show is um, how to avoid going to our splash screen every time. It's, it's pretty much just right in here. Instead of setting the screen to splash screen, you can just set it straight to main menu screen. And so when we load it now, it'll just kind of advance past the splash screen, which doesn't really do anything. That's just for uh, advertising, essentially. Um, so I'll just jump straight in. So uh, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you guys next time.